Hello and welcome to the Titus Time Out podcast. I'm Jenny Abney Sivy, and today I'm going to discuss how a pitot tube works. Airflow is one of the most important concepts in an HVAC system. At its simplest, an HVAC system is about getting cool air into a space to provide comfort. So you need to know how much air you are supplying to a space. So we measure airflow. You can measure airflow at the diffuser with a hood. Or you'll measure airflow in the VAV boxes using the flow sensor. Or maybe you'll measure the airflow through the ductwork using a flow probe. But airflow sensors are basically pitot tubes. A pitot tube is used to measure pressure. If you look at it from the outside, it'll just look like a bent metal tube with a couple holes in it that you stick in the ductwork. Or maybe it'll be a probe that you stick into the ductwork and screw to the side of the ductwork so that you can just connect your tubing to it later to take measurements. So before I get into the inside of the pitot tube, let's do a quick refresher on pressure. Hopefully you remember that total pressure equals static pressure plus velocity pressure. So TP is total pressure. SP is static pressure. This is the pressure exerted in all directions. Think of a blown up balloon where the pressure is pushing out on the walls of the balloon in all, every direction. Velocity pressure is the pressure exerted in the direction of airflow. So think of this as you're sticking your hand outside while you're driving a car, and that's the velocity pressure you're feeling pushing against your hand. So back to our pitot tube. If you were to cut a pitot tube in half, what you'd see is an inner tube and an outer tube. So this is the inner tube, and this blue will be the outer tube. So remember, the outer tube wraps all the way around this white inner tube. The inner tube has an opening that faces forward. The outer tube has one that's perpendicular to the front of the pitot tube, so probably on top right here. Now if you point the pitot tube into the direction of airflow, this front opening will be measuring total pressure. And on top, since there's no velocity in this direction, it's only seeing static pressure. So down here we'll connect some ports to connect this to. Now normally this would be connected to maybe a pressure transducer in a VAV box controller or maybe a handheld meter. In this case I'm going to connect it to a glass manometer. A manometer is a glass tube with a column of liquid in it. We're going to connect both ends to our pitot tube. So if there's no airflow, the liquid level in the manometer is equal on both sides of the U. But now let's say the airflow comes in, so on this total pressure side, the airflow comes in and presses down on the liquid on this side. On the static pressure, there's also a pressure, so it comes in and it presses down on the other side. So this purple area is what the pressure will look like inside the manometer with airflow. So let's get rid of all this stuff related to no airflow. So now you see that the manometer has two different levels, and the difference between this top and the bottom level of the liquid is the velocity pressure, because if you remember, total pressure minus static pressure is velocity pressure. And once you know the velocity pressure, you can calculate the velocity, which is 4,005 divided by the square root of velocity pressure. And once you know the velocity, you can calculate the CFM, which is velocity times area. So that's how a pitot tube works and how it's used to measure airflow. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thanks for taking a time out with us.